Hi everyone, Sal here from Khan Academy. Welcome to our homeroom live stream. I'm out here in California where the sky is looking very ominous. It looks like, yeah, you can't, it's it's bizarre. I've never quite seen this. Uh, for those of y'all who don't know, there's these forest fires in East, well, we've had a few near us and now there's some in Eastern California near, in the Sierra Nevadas and that I've, I've been studying the weather. Uh, those, the, the, the smoke is going over us at a very high altitude Apparently our air isn't that bad because the marine layer is coming under it. So we're getting reasonably fresh air, but it looks very ominous when you look up in the sky, you really can't see the sky. But anyway, uh, with that a little bit of interesting context, I encourage people to do a web search for satellite images of California fires. It is mind blowing. Uh, but really excited about this conversation today, other than what's going on in, in, in the meteorological world, we're gonna have uh, team member Dave Travis to talk about all of the work we do here at Khan Academy on SAT and answer any questions you might have on the SAT. Uh, so start thinking of those, uh, put your questions in the message boards on Facebook and uh, YouTube, and we will uh, try to get to as many of those as possible. But before we jump into that conversation, I will give my standard announcements. A reminder to all of y'all that uh, Khan Academy is a not-for-profit organization. We can only exist through philanthropic donations from folks like yourself. So if you're in a position to do so, uh, please go to uh, khanacademy.org slash donate. Also want to give a special shout out to several organizations that have helped Khan Academy uh, over, over the years, but especially over the last few months as uh, we were already running into deficit. And you can imagine our costs have only grown now that COVID is hit and our traffic is a many fold of what it normally is. And we're trying to accelerate a whole bunch of uh, programs. So special thanks to Bank of America, Google.org, at and Fastly and Novartis for stepping up and helping us fill some of that gap, but we still need more help. So once again, if you're in a position to do so, please think about donating. So with that, excited to bring in my colleague, Dave Travis, who leads up our content work on the SAT side. Dave, good to see you. Good to see you, Sal. How are you doing? I, so I live in West Massachusetts, so I don't really have a. I, I feel I feel for you Californians for sure. Yeah, it's at least the air quality isn't horrible, so it's like you can go for a walk, but it's it is it's kind of scary to look. At. Apparently, there was an earthquake in New Jersey, so all sorts of stuff is going on in the in the world in the world right now, above and beyond uh, many of the things that we've been talking about for for weeks. But but Dave, maybe a good place to start. You know, I think some people know that we have SAT work on Khan Academy. Some people might not be familiar. Just give us, you know, what what's what do we have for uh, students out there, and then maybe what's maybe the latest that you've been working on. Sure. Um, so official SAT practice is a product that you can find at uh, KhanAcademy.org/sat. Um, you can link your PSAT scores if you have them, um, and the system will give you personalized recommendations about what you should practice. We have thousands of, of SAT questions that we developed in collaboration with the College Board, um, so very well-aligned um, qu practice questions. We also have eight full-length practice tests that you can take. Uh, online, and we have a pile of great tips and strategies, articles and videos. Um, every one of those questions has a worked uh, work solution. So just totally loaded with um, with great resources. When I when I first started working for Khan Academy in 2016, when when the, the uh, SAT sort of changed its format, um, the first thing I wanted to do, because I had been working in a, on a, I'd run my own uh, private test prep company in Manhattan for a while, uh, was to bring all those tips and strategies uh, to Khan Academy and, and build out that tips and strategies tab. Um, so, so yeah, so we now have, uh, we're actually working on some new stuff. We're actually working on some new stuff this year. One of the things that we have learned is that um, those students do better. These are best practices that we've learned in these last four years. Um, if you take the recommendations that the system says, hey, you should practice this, students who take those recommendations do better on test day than those who don't. We've also seen that students who take full length practice tests, uh, one or two at least, generally do better than those students who don't take full length practice tests. Um, and we know that students who spend time going over the questions they missed and looking at the solution steps and taking advantage of the, of the resources we have, the articles and videos and, uh, and explanations for why, a, why an answer is wrong and why the right answer is right, um, also do better on test day than those who don't. Um, so with the new content, uh, we're going to sort of pull up a list of what some of that stuff is that my team and I have been working on. Um, we have new reading videos, um, a new set of reading videos that um, 
that go question by question through and talk about not just how to do that question, but techniques with, that you can use when you see a question like that on uh, on test day. So if it's a if it's a citing textual evidence question, you can approach it in a specific way. Um, so uh, we're about to see like where you're going to find the tips and strategies tab, which is next to the practice tab and the full test tab. And the tips and strategies tab is just loaded with good good resources. Um, so if you're spending a lot of time in, in your practice tab and you haven't spent much time in the tips and strategies tab, I'd encourage you to find out more about how to approach a literature passage and its questions. Um, and uh, so this is one new resource that we have in the last few months. Um, we also have uh, new short articles about every single question type in the reading test and in the writing and language test. Um, and finally, uh, we have new math articles. We they're not we haven't done all of them yet, um, but uh, you'll see there there are four of them about in the middle of last week, and now there are more. And we're aiming to get all forty one math skills um, have a full explanation of what exactly from each one of these skills solving the systems of linear equations, operations of polynomials. What exactly do you need to know for the SAT? And these articles include videos from Sal that are from the you know the main content uh the main library at Khan academy uh and also ways to practice and we were hoping that teachers may also use this to understand what what exactly their students need to know um in, uh, in, on test day for each of the skills on the sat in math um so we'd love to hear from you uh you know how you think these are these work and and just stay tuned because we're, we're in the process of making more of them um with our with our team our small but mighty team yeah it looks like on this slide here we can see when some of the information for so folks can stay up to date on what's going on because obviously with all the coronavirus stuff in the world uh some things are are a little bit fluid so it's good to be able to get updates from the college board who as you mentioned you've been working we've all been working very closely with uh, and these are the upcoming weekend test dates you know there's already some questions coming in from facebook javi suresh is asking how to practice for sat math and maybe i'll add a little bit to it you know sat math or verbal let's say you are a student who is taking the sat a month from now what would you 16 year old dave travis be doing how would you what would the your the the next month of your life look like if i were 16 years old i'd be freaking out um so <laughs> you're not 16 years old no not you know i appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> um i would definitely for students who are a month out um you know it depends on how many practice tests you've taken it depends on on what the gap is you're trying to close but for sure um i would visit our help desk article um, which which spells out a, a set of our, our recommendations. We kind of spent time a few months ago making a list of you know during school closures what we what we recommend. Um, and I recently updated it a couple of weeks ago to say for those of you who are about to take the test, what should you do? Um, with four weeks, I'd I'd practice if you have like let's say you have forty five minutes a day that you're going to put into it. Um, if you had that time, I'd spend three or four days. Uh, taking those 45 minutes to take practice recommendations. Um, I'd take a practice test uh, every other week, maybe. But one thing I'd avoid is just doing question after question after question. We found that students who, um, who, who just do question after question and don't take that time to review, uh, review articles you know, about how to do questions like that or review the solution steps for each question, like, definitely use the review tab or the review function in our in official SAT practice, which enables you to go ever, over every single question that you have ever attempted in the system and just review you know, what went wrong on that. Um, how, how do we recommend you might you know, do the problem differently? And then you know, try the question again, maybe cover up the answers and see whether you can get it right this time. Um, yeah, that's a set of content, but definitely yeah, so check that makes, out. That makes that, I mean, you know, my, my gut sense on that, if I were 16 year old Sal and were a more responsible version of that, uh, yeah. I would, I would, yeah, probably 45, I mean, even an hour a day, as you mentioned, like really index on the practice, get the feedback and then review. Don't just keep going through questions, like re reflect on why you might've gotten a question wrong or whether there's a faster or a better way of doing it and then trying to redo it. Uh, but, you know, I would probably spend my Monday through Friday, 45 minutes, hour a day doing that recommended practice, trying to get skills leveled up and then try to take 
at minimum, a, well, maybe a full length practice test or maybe break it up into two days, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but, you know, as I get close to the test, use maybe my Saturdays to try to take as close to full length as practice as possible so that I can kind of build up that stamina so that I'm not, you know, surprised uh, that I have to sit, you know, two or three hours on the on the test day. Uh, but, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense to me. There's a question here from YouTube, Susana Garcia Dominguez, who's uh, I, I probably our MVPQ most valuable question asker, MVQA. Um, uh, she asks, hi, Sal and Dave, how can doing the essay section help? Is the essay really necessary? So what's your view on the essay section generally? Um, and how would you recommend to prep for it either on Khan Academy or off of Khan Academy? Great question. Um, the essay is optional, but uh, as many things are in life, if you, um, those things that are maybe recommended uh, are things that are, you know, that many colleges like to see. And I have heard that if colleges really want to get a, an authentic piece of a writing sample from somebody, they are able to actually see your essay um, from the SAT because colleges know that if you write if, if you submit an essay as part of your college application, it may have, you may have had help. Um, so uh, so they, if they're wondering that something doesn't add up, they, they might actually look at your, your essay. So if you feel like it's, it could be a strong component of your, of your overall profile, I'd say definitely take it. Um, and I, I know that many colleges do encourage people to take it. Um, as for preparation, uh, it, it is definitely important to understand that the SAT essay topic is is a lot like a writing assignment you might get in college. So preparing for the SAT is a process of preparing to become a, a more effective writer in college. Um, we have a lot of great content in the tips and strategies section on, on our system, um, but I would say that you want to figure out, uh, like one sort of top tip is like learn about Logos, which is appeals to reason, learn about pathos, which is appeals to emotion. The assignment is, if some of you don't know, let's take a step back. The assignment is to explain, you read a passage, and then you need to explain uh, how the author is using uh, elements of using writerly um, techniques to, um, to persuade their audience of their, of their position. And there are very clear ingredients that go into persuasive writing, and we identify them in our tips and strategies um, articles about the essay. So check those out. Yeah, no, I really like that because you're, you're absolutely right. I, we, I talked to a college admissions. I talked to one recently about a completely different project, but you know, on the application, they're always a little bit skeptical of to what degree is your own work. But obviously, if they see an essay done in kind of a, a a proctored format they, they know that's your work so that that's super valuable and and there's really great ways great advice for practice so there's a comment here i'll just read it out uh, and then there's a lot of really good questions from robin schwartz facebook teachers learn a ton about the sat by taking it every now and then highly recommend it uh studying for the sat makes you smarter like preparing for a marathon makes you fitter so that's just a fun comment from a teacher and absolutely right you know it's been a while since many of us took the sat and it's the sat has evolved and so as educators uh yeah sounds like Robin's got the right idea. It's, it's good to have a student empathy and you actually might learn things and realize you're having fun. So, so there's a couple of questions here about number of SATs to take and timing. So Nicola Frost from Facebook says, All right, uh, how many times should a student take the SAT? And then Jesus through Mary uh, from YouTube, interesting name, uh, says, do you think it benefits ninth graders to take the SAT prep even if they haven't completed all the relevant coursework? My thought is that they will at least know what they are in for down the road. So what are your thoughts on that? How many times should you take it? When is it, when is it reasonable to start using SAT? I have some views, but I'd love, I'd love yours first. Yeah. yeah I mean, all the, the, the rule book is being rewritten at the moment. I mean, the college board is encouraged, no, knows that, um, that students may not be able to take the SAT. And students now are, they, they, they don't need, uh, many colleges have gone uh, SAT optional and ACT optional this year. Um, the College Board is encouraging admissions offices uh, to understand that due to COVID, there are limited opportunities for students to take these tests. And so as a result, most colleges aren't requiring a test score for the upcoming admission cycle. So um, many are extending their deadlines or accepting scores after deadlines pass. Um, so the rule book is kind of being rewritten. But a year ago, I would have said, um, 
you shouldn't really take it more than three times um, as sort of a, a hard, like that, that's, you shouldn't do any more than that. And you also shouldn't take it officially until you have taken a practice test that leads you to believe that you're going to get a score that you're going to be happy with. Yeah. Does no, that help? No, I mean, you know, that, that, that's consistent with my advice. You know, what I would say is there's opportunities to sometimes take it in middle school. That can be a fun experience because even though you haven't, you might not have seen all of the, the, the mathematics yet, uh, some of you might have, uh, or you might not be fully at the reading comprehension level that you're going to be in a couple of years. It's a great practice run. And, you know, that usually is one that kind of doesn't count uh, towards like the total number you're taking because you took it in middle school. And, it, you know, if you're interested in that, it, it gives you exposure to the test. Um, and it goes, you know, to Jesus through Mary's question. It, it, it lets you know what's coming. And there's some programs and summer camps that you can get into. Uh, but I, I agree with Dave. I think three is on the high side. I would recommend, you know, take it once in middle school if you're kind of precocious and you're curious. I think, you know, there's another question uh, that Nicola Frost asked about what classes to take in order to be prepared. You know, a lot of people think the SAT has like all this really esoteric, advanced stuff in it. The math is only like the core of algebra two, not even like the, the edge case algebra two stuff. It's like quadratics, basic functions, but making sure you really understand that well. So I would say once you understand your algebra two reasonably well, and actually just straight algebra one will probably get you most of it, get you through, you know, 80 or 90, algebra one and geometry will get you through probably 80 or 90% of the math on the SAT and then a little bit of algebra two. Um, you're good. And, and there isn't, you know, there aren't these tricky questions that they used to have from decades ago. They're all very much aligned with standards, not something that you would not necessarily see in a traditional classroom, but it's good to get that that practice. So I would recommend maybe taking it once your sophomore year, uh, once you've gotten, you know, through algebra, geometry, maybe, uh, maybe the end of your sophomore year, uh, and maybe once your junior year, if you're kind of on a little bit of a faster track, and if you, if, or maybe taking it once at the beginning of your junior year, and then maybe at e either at the very end of your junior year is probably, you know, that, that might, that might make sense too. But I think two is kind of a sweet spot and then have space for a third. If you, if you really, if you really need to, it would, would be, um, my yeah, advice. Sure. I mean, the, the most frequent use, the most frequent, uh, you know, pattern that many students do is they take it in March or May. Um, and then again, the fall of their senior year. So, so sorry, junior year, March or May, by that point, you probably have learned the math you need to do well on the SAT. And then, um, you might take, you know, a subject test or might have APs that you're doing in May or June. Um, and then if you want to take the SAT again, take it in August or September or October before you apply to college. Yeah. And I'll add, you know, and you know, the reason why I would, I tell people beginning in, you know, two in junior year is that hopefully by the end of junior year, you're happy with your score and you're done and you can relax a little bit more in the fall. Uh, but then you have also a backup if, if you have to take it again, you know, another, I guess, corollary to that question is when is it too early to use the SAT practice? I've actually been recommending a lot of folks to use the resources that Dave and team have been creating, um, as you know, as as soon as you've essentially taken algebra one or even a little bit of geometry, it's a great resource. Uh, and also the reading comprehension work, I'd say if you're at kind of an eighth or ninth grade reading level, um, you can engage. And actually right now during COVID, it is a great resource to make sure that your reading comprehension and some of your grammar skills don't atrophy right now. Uh, so I highly, highly recommend it. I actually think it, it'll it not just going to prepare for the SAT to Dave's earlier comment. It makes you college ready. Um, and uh, and, and, you're, and you'll just happen to do well in the SAT and in other things because of that. Let's see, other questions. Um, let's see, let me find. A, there is a question from Facebook. Uh, well, there's a couple of interesting questions. From Facebook, Teresa Vasileva is saying, my SAT was canceled for August. How can I keep up with my new one in December? So... I guess there could be a couple of interpretations of that. Maybe she, maybe Teresa's asking um, what she should do for the December test or maybe making sure it doesn't get canceled. Well, choose answer that any way you see fit, Dave. Okay, cool. Um, well, if you're, if you're lined up to take the test in December, um, that's about, you know, you have three, you have September, October, November, you're about 12 weeks out. Um, the, I do recommend that you check out our help desk article. Um, hopefully we'll be able to post that link um, in the chat. Uh, that'll tell you what the 12 week program is that like was what I think is, you know, the best I could come up with as like 
uh, as a, a strategy, uh, a 12 week strategy for somebody to prepare for the SAT. Um, I'm sorry about August. Yeah, like every single, we don't know what's gonna happen, you know, in September, October, November. Um, it could be that your test site is canceled um, or it needs to close for whatever reason. Um, and, and that's, you know, why, uh, that's one of the reasons acknowledging that the college board is, um, is encouraging colleges to take take scores later than they might otherwise do, um, and it's the reason why many colleges are going going SAT optional um, this year. So, um, if you're trying to prepare for December, you know, please do check out that help desk article um, because it's jam packed and it's you know you, a picture is worth a thousand words. Like you know, like it's um, it's pretty it's pretty thorough. Um, so so do all that stuff. Yeah. And this question, another question from Susana Dominguez from YouTube. How close are the Khan Academy practice tests to the real SAT test? Great question. They are real SAT tests. So mm, um, that's about as close as you can get. <laughs> yeah. So they are the exact, exact same tests you will find in the official SAT study guide, which is the big blue book um, that the College Board publishes. Um, of, those, uh, of those eight tests, six of them were actually administered. Um, and, uh, and two of them were, uh, were ones before that were from 2016, but they're all, um, they are all as close as you can possibly get. We have the best aligned practice materials and the, the real practice tests, um, uh, that, you know, nobody else has access to that. So if you're looking for real practice questions, which is definitely a best practice, don't, um, you can, when you move into other test prep programs, you, you know, every does a really, you know, does their best to try to get questions that are just like the real thing. But we, our practice tests are the real thing. And our practice questions were developed with College Board, the test maker. So um, we're as close as you can get, really. And it's free. Yeah. And it's free. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. The best things in life are free. Um, so another question, maybe we have time for one more question uh, from YouTube. Don Whitfield is asking, does taking multiple SAT practices improve your score on the actual SAT or will it do the opposite? I did it myself during the summer, taking it multiple times and practicing every day and I improved. I, what's your view? Right, right? You, you, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, my, my view, Don, is it, if you are taking multiple SATs, you know, just taking them one after another isn't necessarily going to improve your score. But if you take it, you reflect on it, you see what you missed, didn't miss, um, you practice, you do some substantive practice, then the next time that you take it, hopefully several months after that or a year after that, uh, you are likely to improve. And there are schools, once again, if you don't take a ton of SATs, you know, if you take like five SATs, they're going to think that's weird. But if you took two SATs or three SATs, many schools will actually take your best score in each section. So that also uh, is, is to your advantage. And anything to add to that, Dave? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that um, practice tests, we have the eight real practice tests. Don't like, I wouldn't just use all those up. If you're an intense practicer and you just want to take practice test after practice test, hold hold the real ones in reserve until like you're a month away from the test. Like you should take a, if you're like three months out, you should take one practice test every two or three weeks with practice in between. Um, and reflection on how to approach questions differently, learning how, learning the strategies and techniques from the tips and strategies articles. Um, but yeah, I think we've we've said it before earlier in this in this uh, in this cast. Uh, it's it's super important not to just keep on doing questions, and and it's you need to reflect and review um, how to how to how you're going to approach the questions you got wrong differently next time when you see them in the wild on test day. Yeah, no, this is super, super helpful, uh, Dave. I, I unfortunately, I'm, I'm gonna have to cut. I have a, a hard stop in a few minutes, but uh, Dave, any parting words of of good luck or wisdom for for all of the aspiring SAT test takers? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, the more you do it, the better you get. As as is true with so many things in life. Um, uh, the SAT is just one part of your college application. Remember that extracurriculars and your grades and any volunteer or work experience. Um, your your essays, your interview, all those are ingredients in your college application that are just as important, if not more so, than um, 
than the SAT. So rem just keep it all in perspective. Um, but if you have the time and have the hunger to improve your score, um, we have, you know, Khan Academy is a great place to do it. Um, so good luck out there. And uh, I believe in you all. It's just so great to, uh, to have this opportunity to, uh, to help people do better in the SAT. I really um, am grateful. Awesome. Thanks. And I'll just add, you know, something that Dave said earlier, which is not only will it make you better at SAT, the way that the practice and frankly, the SAT is designed, is these are skills you're going to need in college. So regardless of what happens on the SAT, this will just make you more likely to succeed in, frankly, in high school and in college. Uh, so completely agree with that. I also agree with Dave, like, you know, the more that you make something big in your mind, the more that it'll stress you out and it actually might undermine your performance. So highly recommend mindfulness, you know, doing what you need to do, focus on the process, and then the results will be what they are. Don't define yourself by that. It is part of your college application. It does not define who you are as a human being. Uh, and I'll, you know, I, obviously this is all under the Khan Academy umbrella, but I can uh, toot our collective horn because Dave and the team uh, and many others have done the bulk of the work here, that it really is an incredible resource. I highly recommend it. it you know, we have efficacy studies that it improves a student's outcomes. Uh, and, you know, there's things that cost thousands of dollars that have no efficacy studies behind it. And this is free and it's done with the College Board. I'll also throw out a completely separate project from Khan Academy, but one that I've been helping out with advising called schoolhouse.world, which is also now going to be doing live SAT tutoring uh, from volunteers for anyone who might need it. So what I would recommend is do everything Dave mentioned, put that 45 minutes, hour a day, get do, do the recommended practice, try to level up skills, on the weekends, you know, don't use up all your practice tests, but but start spacing them out as you get close to the test. And then if you have questions in specific domains, you actually can get free live group tutoring sessions uh, on schoolhouse.world. Once again, that's a separate project than Khan Academy. Disclaimer necessary. It's a startup. It's not as polished and as, as everything we have on Khan Academy, but it's worth looking into. So uh, Dave, thanks so much for, for, for answering these questions. And uh, uh, I will... Yeah. And, and uh, thanks everyone else for joining. Um, always a fun conversation. Please join us tomorrow. We're going to have David Banks, founder of the Eagle Academy, uh, which speaks uh, empowering at risk young men to learn, succeed and develop character. So we're really excited about having uh, that uh, conversation tomorrow. It's a really impressive uh, school or set of schools that, that David has founded and now leads. Uh, so I will see you tomorrow.